Hi, family of God. This is Believers Global TV. And there are three levels of sin. Very quickly now. Number one, there's personal sin. Personal sin. Shortcomings as an individual. Number two, there are territorial sins. It is not something committed by an individual, but it is something that is territorial, like Nineveh. Are we together now? If you were in Nineveh, even if you were a baby, you will still suffer. Are we together? There are times that the concept of sin that attacks the people is not personal sin. You can sin as a person. If we say we have no sin, the Bible says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Are we together? But if we confess our sins, the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But there are territorial sins. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. There are territorial sins. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis chapter 18, when you read from verse 21 to 23, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was not just the sin of an individual. It was a territorial sin. Number three, there is sin based on foundation and bloodlines. Sin based on foundations and bloodlines based on foundations and bloodlines. I think that should be Psalm 11 verse 3. Give us Psalm 11 verse 3 and let me see. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the... Not what can men, what can the righteous do? Even the, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This is very powerful. So all evil altars depend on this one altar to be able to function is called the altar of sin and iniquity you know what that means if the altar of sin and iniquity is destroyed all other altars cannot be powered they depend on the strength of this existing altar to fund and receive their energy to manifest that means no matter how you destroy, you pray, you bind, you cast individual altars. Once this altar is still at work, sin and iniquity, this altar, whether personal, territorial, or through bloodline, you will not be able to do much. It's the reason why people pray and shout sincerely and it looks like the realm of the spirit has no regard and has no respect for what they say. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. 
Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.